Uh, but before I begin, uh, I will give a little bit of briefing lah of the things that you need uh, you need to be aware of. Uh, so first of all, uh, we will have uh, I will start first on the mini project. So uh, by right lah, kalau or you guys remember the deadline submission for mini project is this Friday uh, midnight. Okay, so the submission is on BLE. Uh, make sure you compile into one PDF file and then you submit into VLE. Okay. However, uh, I understand. I think some, I got a received email. I think some of the students in reaction are uh, COVID. So if you have any of your members who has problem, uh, Regardless, lah, not necessarily COVID. In any other matters that uh that makes that you cannot submit the report uh this Friday, uh please inform me. Please inform me first. Uh get my permission dulu lah. If your members are not able to do so, uh means you cannot submit. Uh the means the group cannot submit due to members or uh, any whatsoever problem. Uh please inform me. Uh please get my agreement first. Uh you may extend, but please inform me first. Eh, kepada group group yang kalau ada masalah sebab member dia uh have any other problems okay so uh, do inform me okay jangan assume yang tak boleh stand ke boleh je tapi do inform me kepada group uh, yang ada masalah untuk submit on time okay so that's one lah for the mini project submission okay friday midnight on your vle that's one okay then second uh, as you know, I already wrote uh, in the Teams, we will have test. Okay, so test kita hari Rabu depan. So I do it during our tutorial time. Okay, so our tutorial time is 9.30 to 11.30. Okay, so the test time is actually 9.30 to 11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to email uh, all of you the questions through your unique KL student email. So make sure your student email is working. So I will email the questions to your student email. Uh, you download the student, you download the questions. Uh, I will also attach the submission form. Okay, so you download the question, you answer on a white white piece of paper, blank paper. The pasal jawab, uh, snap picture or scan. Uh, compile it uh, into PDF. Okay, compile it into PDF. Kalau bukan PDF, susah sikit kadang-kadang. So make sure you dah ambil gambar ke, you dah scan. Uh, compile it into PDF. And then uh, attach the submission page on the front. And then email it, I'm uh, uh, not sorry, uh, submit it through VLE juga. So uh, under VLE, I will put under test one submission. So the exam finish at 11. So after the, sorry, the test finish at 11. So after you are done everything, uh, you are given another 30 minutes lah. Means you have until 11 to 11.30 uh, to do all the compiling, so on and so forth. You are given 30 minutes for you to uh, submit in your VLE. Okay, for the test. Again, uh, do tell your friends if you cannot make it for the test. Uh, for any reasons, uh, please contact me personally. Okay, so don't worry. Kalau betul-betul tak boleh sebab ada masalah kesihatan ke, ada masalah apa-apa ke. Uh, you know my style, you inform me. Okay, uh, we will arrange, we will arrange for you lah if you have problem okay for the rest is still on uh, Wednesday 9 30 a.m. okay so uh, saya pun tak nak keluar banyak sangat untuk test sebab I know that uh, the short semester and I'm sure you got a lot of other tests so I will cover from chapter 1 to chapter 3 sahaja okay so what we done until chapter 3 uh, that's all that I will cover. Kerusha your camera is switched on all right okay Okay, so uh, make sure uh, you download the question on time, so answer and then uh, submit back lah. So that test is next Wednesday. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is, okay, uh, to facilitate and give you opportunity to study. So I know you got other tests because I did my course. So uh, today is a class. Okay, today we have class, right? So Wednesday tutorial, I will not have any class. Okay, so you have that two hours uh, to study. I give you uh, opportunity to study as well as not about mini projects. So mini projects submission Jumaat ni kan? So Rabu ni tutorial saya akan cancel Saya tak buat tutorial uh, Next Monday pun lecture I will cancel as well So you have about 5 hours Boleh lah buat mini project And you can also take the time to study Okay so again I repeat first So this Wednesday tutorial I will not do Next Monday lecture pun saya takkan buat So you got about 5 hours to do for your mini project And to do and to study for the test as well And you have any problem for the mini project or you have any problem for the test, uh, you please inform me accordingly. Okay. Tetapi, okay. Uh, tapi, doctor, sorry. Yes, Amirul? Yeah, uh, the test on 6 uh, April, right? Yes, Wednesday, during our tutorial time. 6 April lah? Yes, minggu depan. Minggu right. depan, Rabu. Thank you, 
Welcome. Bukan Rabu ni eh, Rabu minggu depan. Saya dah block dalam kalender. So, please check your kalender. I already block um, ini projek punya deadline. I already block the time for the test. So, your things are already blocked accordingly in your kalender lah. Just that the test question, as I told you, please remark and remember. Test question, saya akan email kepada kamu punya student email. So, during the test, you don't need to be on Teams. Uh, I do an open book test. You may refer to anything. The only thing that you cannot refer is your friends. Means, uh, tak boleh meni niru jawapan kawan lah tu yang the only thing that you cannot do for my test is tak boleh meniru jawapan kawan. The rest you can do. You can open book, you can refer notes, you can refer anything, you can refer internet. The only thing you cannot refer is your answer, your friend's answer. Okay? So that's for the test. Right. However, I will need to take your time uh, this Thursday. Sebab Thursday ni kan lab kan? But as I told you, I decided that we are not going to do a uh, physical lab. Dah tak ada lab face to face. So instead, I will do a uh, online demonstration for the lab. Okay, so this Thursday, kan normally kita punya lab time 8.30 to 11.30. But you don't need to come, so you don't need to be on team so early. Just make sure that you are on teams at 10 a.m. So lab kita akan berlangsung daripada 10 a.m. Okay, our lab will be from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. So, just make sure you're on Teams. I already invite the calendar. I will do a live demonstration. So, I will try my best. Although, actually, probably, you probably would not really see it clearly. Lah. I will try to use my iPad camera. I will try, I will get the technician to help. I will try to do the real operations of the lab. Tapi mungkin setiap lab, I can explain about maybe 30 minutes or maybe about 20 minutes, so on and so forth lah. But at least the most important is uh, untuk kamu faham the reactor. Sebab kalau kamu tak faham lab tu, nanti macam mana kan kamu nak buat lab report kan. My concern is saya takut yang part lab report lah yang kamu mungkin uh, tak boleh buat kalau kamu tak faham lab. Okay, so but for that, uh, let me do a little bit briefing on the lab part sebab saya dah mudahkan certain part because I realise actually 14 minggu untuk kamu students dengan a lot of courses actually is very challenging. So I decided I will simplify my laboratory part so that you don't have that much burden that at least you to be fair to you, you got time uh, for other assessment. Okay, so saya just briefing sikit je pasal uh, what is going to be different for our laboratory. Okay, so kerja eh. Right, so uh, this slide saya dah letak pun dalam uh, our teams as well as on your VLE. Uh, this slide is already there okay you can refer to it just want to explain up what is going to be changed or what is changing in your lab part okay lab assessment okay so sebelum ni kalau kamu ingat kita ada lab report kita ada pre-lab kita ada psychomotor assessment so saya rasa macam kesiakan kamu jugalah I give too much sebab kamu pun ada mini project and mini project tu pun sebenarnya dah susah so what I'm going to do is for the lab now uh, laboratory report tu masih biasalah macam biasalah I will explain later lah lab report macam biasa you got four lab report uh, yang pre-lab dengan psychomotor tu saya dah combine jadi satu online quiz terus so means kamu dah tak payah buat yang pre-lab yang banyak-banyak benda tu dah tak payah buat uh, Komoto pun tak payah. I'm just going to combine and do one online uh, multiple choice punya quiz. So it's one hour quiz lah, 60 minit. Uh, I will open the quiz throughout the whole semester sampai minggu 14. I will try to post the question by this week. I try, if not next week. So you just masuk VLE, dalam VLE, you just do the uh, online quiz, 60 minit. Uh, objektif je pun senang je. Uh, so that's all for your uh, pre-lab dengan psychomotor assessment. So yang dulu saya beritahu kamu kena isi borang lah, kena buat apa, no longer uh, applicable. You just do one online quiz. Online quiz tu will test you, mesti, uh, will test you about uh, laboratory practice, laboratory handling, uh, a little bit on the laboratory as well, a little bit on the reaction engineering punya lab jugalah. So sebab tu kalau kamu jangan attempt awal sangat lah, you wait until you dah habis semua lab report, kamu dah betul-betul faham, uh, mungkin towards the end of the semester, minggu dua belas, minggu tiga belas, empat belas, baru kamu attempt quiz tu. So, quiz tu actually, uh, lab kita dua puluh markah kan, the final grade is 20 marks. So, 10 marks is actually from that online quiz. Another 10 marks is from lab report. Okay, so I think this is quite fair lah. And the question untuk online quiz pun tak susah pun sebenarnya. It's just very basic question. It's just to help you to score, to at least get that 10 marks uh, from your uh, lab psychomoto and pre-lab. Okay, so... That's the main change in our laboratory assessment. Okay, so next one. 
Right, so since that now, kamu dah tak ada physical uh, face-to-face lab, kamu mesti kena buat lab report. Okay, so uh, apa yang saya buat is, I will give you, uh, kita akan mula lab, uh, kami sini saya akan buat lab demo, sekali je, sekali je lab demo, bukan setiap minggu, Today, this Thursday I will do one lab demo, 10 o'clock, I will put in your calendar, so you attend that, it's considered as you dah attend lab, so that attendance is for the lab demo tu compulsory eh, the attendance for the lab demo from your teams, on your teams is compulsory, sebab tu menandakan yang uh, you attend the laboratory session, okay, um, however don't worry, for those yang really really wants to learn the laboratory face to face, tengoklah macam mana kalau end of the semester, you got opportunity to come back to campus, uh, you want to learn from, you want to learn, okay just uh, text me, call me, I can always bring you uh, for unofficial visit lah, okay, tapi tu kemudian lah bila kalau ada opportunity, okay, but for our lab, okay, you just attend this Thursday, dah kira kamu dah attend untuk laboratory session, okay, then what I do, uh, since kita minggu 6 kan, minggu 6 ni kita dah, uh, I already do lab demo, so I space out setiap 2 minggu kamu hantar satu lab report, so I think not too bad and then uh, so setiap, saya dah bagi deadline lah, so maknanya minggu 8, uh, first lab report, minggu 10, minggu 12, minggu 14 and then check juga, saya dah bagi schedule, uh, saya dah bagi jadual, okay group 1, lab report mana yang kamu kena hantar untuk minggu itu so please make sure you check this, okay, hopefully this doesn't burden you that much uh, ka macam kamu tahu kalau staff saya sebenarnya macam mini project pun sama saya you don't need to do long okay, kamu tak payah tulis panjang-panjang bagi saya yang penting you hit the point means okay, apa part kriteria yang kamu perlu ada kamu jawab dah okay, so you don't I, my style is short and straight to the point so you don't need to worry yang kena tulis berpanjang-panjang page ke tak payah as long as you address what is needed it's already more than enough for me okay, so for uh, reaction for lab juga kepada mini project okay, so the same, lab report pun uh, submission on VLE, so group member kamu tolong, uh, kamu compile satu lab report, submit dalam VLE so even lab put, I try to help you by putting 5%, normally 4, okay, then I feel macam uh, because the transition from 70 weeks to 40 weeks is very stressful to the student, I can really understand I talk to some of your friend, uh, the transition 17 kepada 14 dengan lab lagi, dengan mini project is very stressful so this semester, untuk ease up your transition, saya letak 5 orang, mini project pun 5 orang, uh, lab report pun 5 orang, lepas tu uh, the last, kalau kamu tengok ada member kelima tu, is actually I take from the FlexiLearn punya st uh, student, so I combine FlexiLearn punya student sekali, so uh, so to help you lah, to ease up your burden on the lab report, okay, so jangan, tak payah tulis lab report panjang-panjang that's my uh, advice to you guys tulis panjang pun sama je, maka tulis pendek pun sama je, asal you hit the point what is needed in the lab report and then you remember right, lab report uh, setiap student dah ada part-part dia kan so don't forget to rotate for example kalau minggu ni lab report 1 kamu student 1 okay so next next lab report kamu jadi student 2 so on and so forth sebab kalau kamu student 1 kamu hanya buat summary kamu buat result kalau kamu student 2 kamu buat discussion student 3 so on and so forth so kamu kena rotate lah means setiap lab report tu you will play a role you will do one part of each of the lab report so I think this way pun will help you a lot uh, to save up your time and also to lessen your burden on the lab report okay right so then next uh, since you did not attend the lab uh, physically I already provided the experimental result the sample of the result so please use the sample of the experimental result for your lab report Okay, so all the experimental result ni saya dah bagi, dah lengkap. So kamu check, kalau kamu eksperimen 1A, okay, tengok sample result eksperimen 1A. Kalau kamu 1B, check eksperimen 1B. So 2A, 2B, 3A. Uh, 3A, 3B, experiment 4 Okay, so please make, please make sure you check Saya dah tulis dalam schedule tadi uh, Ketika group 1, experiment 1A Kamu check lah, uh, sample result experiment 1A Untuk buat lab report Okay, so uh, Should be that's all Okay, then uh, Saya tak explain selebihnya Tetapi I also prepare slide for you To help you to understand The calculation for the lab report Sebab biasanya saya ajarkan Masa lab tu saya akan ajar kamu But kita tak jumpa kan, tapi I already prepared all the slide 
to guide you how to do the calculations. Sebab biasanya part calculation ni uh, memang a little bit uh, memeningkan. So please make sure you check. I dia sedia, uh, this slide dah ada dalam team setengah BLE. Please refer to this when you are doing the lab report because I teach you how to do the calculation, uh, macam mana nak plot graph, so on and so forth for each of the experiment already prepared for you. Okay, so hopefully this one also will help you to lessen your burden and then kamu tak payahlah spend terlalu banyak masa untuk fikir macam mana buat lab report. Okay, alright. So uh, that's all for the lab report, uh, mini project and the test. So pada yang datang lambat tadi, again saya repeat uh, test Rabu depan, bukan Rabu ni, Rabu depan pagi. Mula-mula saya nak ingatkan nak buat Isnin tapi Isnin kasi kita petang. Saya rasa macam Isnin tu kamu dah start puasa. Kalau tengah-tengah petang tu saya rasa mesti kamu dah layu. Kesian juga kalau pas setengah, pas setengah saya buat sampai tujuh. I'm sure you do not have the enough energy. So I decided tak takpelah saya buat Rabu, Rabu pagi. Dalam sembilan setengah, sembilan setengah lah Rabu pagi. So hopefully doing it morning will give you a better uh, mood lah untuk sit for the test. Okay. So hopefully that also helps you in your test as well. And again, please tell your friends sebab saya rasa ada kawan kamu sekarang yang kena quarantine COVID ataupun ada yang kat quarantine center. So kalau kamu boleh pesan kat dia ke ataupun kamu boleh beritahu saya ke on behalf of your friend, please tell me supaya I can retest, I can rearrange the test for those people yang tak boleh sit for the test. Okay, right. So done on the mini project. Okay, now I will continue on lecture chapter 4. But today punya lecture pun tak banyak. Kita nak just habiskan yang baki. Alright, and then uh, tak apa. Tutorial kita buat lepas sem break lah. Miss Rabu ni saya tak kacau kamu. Saya bagi kamu masuk untuk buat mini project. Uh, Kamis kamu attend lab sekejap. Online lab. Isnin depan pun kamu free 3 jam. Kamu boleh belajar untuk test saya. Then Rabu uh, Rabu tu kamu sit for the test. Okay. Right, so I back to my lecture chapter 4. Okay, pada yang datang lambat lagi sekali saya ingatkan. Test is only chapter 1 to chapter 3. So kalau saya masuk chapter 4, saya rasa susah sangat. Saya pun kesian juga. Tapi tak apa. Jadi chapter 4, I will include in the second test lah. Uh, chapter 4, 5, 6, second test. Chapter test 1 is only chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. So uh, kalau kamu nak tanya macam mana nak buat untuk test, uh, kamu just make sure uh, tutorial tu kamu jawab. Macam soalan tambahan yang saya bagi tu kamu jawab. And then make sure kamu betul-betul faham lah. So normally test 1, okay. Normally okay. Normally. Tapi kita tengok macam mana lah. We see how uh, for this semester. Right, so I'm back to my lecture for chapter 4. Okay, so uh, to recap back, kalau kamu ingat, you learn a lot of equation, right? You learn banyak-banyak equation. I think last week we covered like 20, 21 equation. So today we cover a little bit more equation, tapi we are left with only one reactor. So last week, you have done already a batch dengan a PFR and I'm sure you already got very confused sebab banyak sangat equation. Okay, so uh, minggu ni pun, hari ni pun a little bit more equation, tapi tak apa. Uh, nanti bila kamu naik sand break sebab minggu ni, minggu 6 kan, minggu depan, minggu 7, lepas tu dah sand break. Okay, naik sand break baru kita buat tutorial uh, then kamu akan faham lebih baik. Tapi basically, chapter for ni lah, I told you, dia banyak equation. Dia kan open book, macam test one pun saya buat open book. So you can just refer. Tapi of course lah, kalau tak faham tu susah sebab kita ada banyak equation, right? So that will be the main challenge lah. Bila terlalu banyak equation, kita tak tahu macam nak guna. Okay, so today we will cover CSTR. Okay, kita ingatkan kita nak design equation dia kan? Okay, so why we have so many equation? Last week you learn 20, 20 equation. Why we have so many equation? Because you know that there are certain criteria yang you have to fulfill. Satu criteria berubah, equation pun dah berubah. So that was that was three main criteria. First is the type of reactor. Okay, are we designing batch? Are we designing PFR? Or are we designing CSTR? So for uh, today, we're talking about CSTR. So, benda pertama kamu kena check. Then, second is kamu kena check liquid atau gas phase. So, itu pun penting. Okay, kalau dia liquid, equation dah berlainan. Gas phase, equation dah berlainan. Means, CSTR liquid lain dengan CSTR gas. Okay, second. Third criteria, rate law dia. You remember, right? Reaction, we got different rate law. Kita ada rate law, uh, first order we respect to A. Kita ada second order we respect to A. We also have rate law where is first order we respect to A, first order we respect to B. So, kita ada minus RA equals to KCA, minus RA equals to KCA square, minus RA equals to KCACB. Okay, so 
different rate law pun equation akan berlainan juga. So we have three criteria. So make sure you have to check these three accordingly. So katakan kalau uh, equation kamu refer to doesn't fulfill all three, definitely equation tu salah. So you must be very careful when we are looking at the equation. Tetapi uh, the good thing about uh, CSTR equation, this equation dia very easy. Dia, dia yang tak ada dah pengamiran. Remember last week we learned kalau batch dengan PFR, we have the integral. So integral tu lah part yang susah because we have to integrate the equation. Uh, CSTR ni tak payah integrate. Okay, because CSTR punya design equation tu dah memang linear. Okay, so how do we uh, elucidate or how do we uh, we design the equation? Okay, so let us start very simple kita start dengan liquid sebab if you remember liquid memang senang nak express yang susah adalah sebenarnya gas phase okay so kita start dengan liquid so three things first first ah uh, CSTR so you know CSTR uh, the design equation is to find the volume so the volume of CSTR equals to FA not x per minus RE so this equation dia is given as this Okay, now we do when is the rate law is first order with respect to E. So, maknanya katakan sekarang dalam tindak balas kita tu, rate law dia minus RA equals to KCA. Okay, so untuk test minggu depan, kamu dah faham, kamu dah kena faham lah apa tu rate law, apa maksud dia kalau kata first order, second order, so on and so forth. Okay, so sepanjang tu dia punya kelas, I will give you a little bit of hint, I will tell you apa yang penting kamu kena tahu. So dalam cerita tiga, kita belajarkan pasal rate law, so by now you dah kena faham. Kalau katakan seorang kata first order you respect to E. Apa maksud dia? Maksud dia rate law dia minus RA tu sama dengan KCA. So, power of 1. So power of 1 biasanya kita tak tulis the power of 1 that's why it become uh, KCA. Okay. So next kita akan uh, write down the concentration. Concentration pun kamu dah belajar dalam chapter 3 right. We express kita dah belajar cerita express concentration untuk uh, flow reactors. Kalau cakap pasal flow ni PFR CSTR lah. Then kamu kena ingat kan dia ada liquid, dia ada gas. So kamu kena tengok kalau liquid concentration dia kita express as CA equals to CA not in bracket 1 minus X. Okay, so how many liquid? Okay, kita express CA equals to CA not in bracket 1 minus X. So what we do now? Kita combine 1, 2, 3. Okay, kita combine number 1, number 2, number 3. So, so we get volume CSTR equals to FA not X per our minus RA are replaced with KCA. Okay, dah replace dengan KCA. Okay, but You always remember, kita selalu akan uh, evaluate in terms of conversion. Okay, kita mesti bercakap nanti dalam soalan test ke exam ni, kamu tengok memang conversion tu akan ada lah. Information pasal conversion tu akan ada. Kecuali kalau disuruh kamu cari conversion. Kalau pengiraan lain, dia mesti will have X. So, when this equation doesn't have X, that's why kita terbitkan balik CA ni dalam bentuk CA not in bracket 1 minus X. So, that's why we learn to express concentration. Sebab writing CA, we will not, kita tak measure CA. We always measure in terms of X and in terms of CA not. Okay, so become K CA not 1 minus X. So, done. So, you can see the red part is basically you dah derive this equation to find uh, the volume of a CSTR if the reaction is a first order with respect to A. Okay. However, okay, equation, ingat macam PFR kan, kita ada version yang berlainan of the design equation. So, kenapa kita ada version yang berlainan? Sebab, it depends on information given to you. So, for example, katakan you, find, you want to find the volume, uh, you know FA0, you know X, you know K, you know CA0, kamu boleh solve. Ingat kan, kalau macam uh, kamu nak solve any mathematics or any engineering questions yang melibatkan pengiraan, even for next week test, Kamu kena tahu apa yang kamu nak cari. Okay, katakan kamu satu equation. You know what the unknowns that you want to find. The rest tu kamu dah kena cari dulu nilai dia. So, means kalau unknown lain, the other unknowns, unless you can solve all the value, it's impossible for you to get the desired unknowns punya nilai. Okay, so make sure you tahu. Okay, katakan you nak cari volume. Okay, katakanlah. Walaupun soalan chapter 4 takkan keluar. Tapi katakan you want to find volume. So, you know without FA0, without X, without K, without C A0, I can never solve this problem. Okay, so that's one thing that you must really remember even next week when you're answering the task. 
However, let's say you are not given FA0 dan CA0. Okay, so for those yang tak ingat, apa tu FA0? FA0 tu adalah initial molar flow rate of A. CA0 tu initial concentration of A. So, maksudnya untuk next week test pun, make sure kamu dah tahu lah. Okay, kalau dia kata molar flow rate, apa simbol dia? Kalau kata concentration, apa simbol dia? Volumetric flow rate, apa simbol dia? Okay, number of moles, apa simbol dia? So, that will be the biggest challenge for test 1 normally untuk students sebab I can understand baru belajar tujuh minggu nak ingat semua simbol and then of course I'm not the only course that you learn you got any many other courses that you learn it's that is definitely impossible definitely a challenging task lah okay so but you have to somewhat get familiar sebab tu kalau boleh uh, tengok dalam contoh chapter 3 punya soalan tengok tutorial yang penting mesti faham. Kalau kamu faham, most likely okay je sebenarnya. Okay. So let's say, kamu tak tahu FA0 dan CA0. Or let's say you are not given FA0, you're not given CA0. However, you want to find the volume. Okay. But you know that FA0 and CA0 is correlated to inlet volumetric uh, flow rate, epsilon 0. So ni pun kamu kena ingat lah perkaitan antara ketiga-tiga parameter ni. Uh, volumetric flow rate, molar flow rate dengan concentration which uh, volumetric flow rate ni sebenarnya sama dengan FA0 per CA0 ataupun cara senang untuk kamu ingat bagi saya adalah kamu ingat FA0 tu sama dengan CA0 multiply by V0. Easier lah. Biasanya kita bahagi ni kita akan confuse tau nak, nak mana satu perkataan mana satu bawah. So normally I will remember multiplication. So I remember FA0 tu sama dengan CA0 multiply with epsilon naught ataupun kalau nak tahu epsilon naught maka equals to FA0 per CA0. Okay so now I can replace my FA0 at the top and the CA0 at the bottom if I divide I will get the epsilon naught. So sekarang saya dapat version kedua equation saya which is epsilon naught x yang lain semua tak berubah. So epsilon naught x in R per k in bracket 1 minus x. So this also formula can be used to find the volume of your CSDR. So, version pertama, version kedua, beza dia. Version pertama, if I know FA0, CA0. Version kedua, if I know epsilon not the volumetric flow rate. And then, similar to PFR, we can also use to find the space time. So, space time chapter 3 kita dah belajar kan. Okay, to recap back. Chapter 3 kita dah belajar juga space time, tau. Okay, kalau you see tau, tau is means space time. Apa tu? Tau, space time. So, space time is equals to volume reactor per inlet volumetric flow rate. V divided by epsilon naught is space time. Kalau space velocity, space velocity 1 per space time. 1 per tau is space velocity. Kalau nak cakap pasal space time itself, is only volume per epsilon naught. Volume per inlet volumetric flow rate. Itu pun kamu kena ingat eh, untuk test minggu depan. Uh, definitely akan ada question about that. So you have to remember that. Okay, so correlated back to this, kita pun boleh cari space time. So to find the space time, if you realize on your left, you have volume. On your right, you do have one epsilon naught kan? Epsilon naught x per k in bracket 1 minus x. So the epsilon naught ni, if you realize from right, I can move to the left. So from right to the left. So uh, at first it's at the top, but when you move to the right, left hand side, it become bottom, it becomes division, okay? So you become volume over epsilon naught, volume over inlet volumetric flow rate, okay? So this volume per inlet volumetric flow rate is actually our space time. So that's why we get our space time. So sekarang kita dah boleh cari space time. So belah kiri dah dapat space time. So what happens to belah kanan? So belah kanan akan tinggal x and divided by k in bracket 1 minus x. So now we had the third version of the equation of which this is used to find space time. So katakan kamu confused mana satu kita nak guna. It depends on the question. First dia nak cari volume ke dia nak cari space time. Katakan dia nak cari volume. Apa information dia beri? Do they give us FA0? Do they give us CA0? Kalau dia beri, you use the first version. Let's say they don't give. They give you inlet volumetric flow rate. You can use the second version. So that's how you differentiate. However, yang penting all three equation kena hanya boleh digunakan if your questions or your reaction fulfill this three thing. Dia mesti-mesti CSTR, dia mesti-mesti liquid phase, dia mesti-mesti rate law dia minus RA, KCA. 
Kalau salah satu tak dipenuhi, tiga-tiga equation ni dah tak valid ataupun dah tak betul lah kalau kamu guna equation ni. Okay, so done for CSTR. Okay, uh, sorry, CSTR first order, right. But before I go further, there's something interesting or there's something additional about CSTR liquid phase ini. Okay, nanti dalam report pun kamu akan tengok benda ni. Okay, so for CSTR liquid phase, First order reaction yang tadi kita buat tu minus RA sama dengan KCA tu tadi kita derive kan. Kita derive kita dapat space time dia yang tadi kita buat equals to X per K in bracket 1 minus X. Okay tadi yang first order kita derive the space time we get this. Right. So what I do is let's say I move my K. Okay reaction rate constant. Okay so chapter 3 pun kita dah belajar kan reaction rate constant. Okay, don't forget apa tu reaction rate constant. Macam kita nak kira reaction rate constant. Kita akan guna Arrhenius equation. Make sure kamu practice. Macam kita nak guna Arrhenius tu kamu practice. Okay, so the reaction rate constant tu, if saya move from uh, right to left. Eh, sorry, left. Uh, right to left. Okay, when you move right to left, the K will go to the top, right? So, K akan berpindah ke atas. Okay, so it become uh, tau CSTR multiplied by K. Okay, so this tau CSTR K is what we call as a dam collar number. So today you learn another one more thing. You learn dam collar number. Okay, so maybe I think in engineering you have learned many types of number kan. Kalau sebelum ni mungkin you have belajar pasal Reynolds number. So for those yang, I think you have learned before Reynolds number. Reynolds number ni, kamu ingat kan ada formula kan? You kamu kira formula dia. Uh, Density multiply with velocity diameter over viscosity if I'm not mistaken. Reynolds number tu kalau kamu ingat kamu akan kira number dia. So this Reynolds number is used to predict the behavior of your flow. So kalau kamu ingat kalau number Reynolds number kamu kira ni ikut formula if below 2500 kita kata the flow aliran aliran liquid tu adalah laminar flow ataupun maksud dia aliran aliran uh, flow tu adalah tak bergelora laminar flow. However if you calculate uh, Reynolds number tu more than 2005 bukan more than 4000 we call it as turbulent flow maksudnya kamu boleh predict aliran cecair kamu tu akan aliran yang bergelora so why do people do this type of prediction sebab ingat kan contohnya kamu tahu kalau macam let's say we want to transport uh, uh, fluid in a pipeline it's going to be a big pipeline and you cannot always monitor tengok dalam pipeline lalu aliran dia bergelora ke aliran dia uh, Uh, betul, uh, tenang ke? We cannot, right? We cannot use physical examination. Hence, kita guna this engineering number to tell us the prediction. Means katakan kalau saya kira not number saya 2000, most likely aliran fluid saya adalah aliran yang tak bergelora, aliran yang tenang. However, if it's above 4000, most likely aliran fluid saya adalah aliran yang bergelora. So, why this is important? Because then, I can manipulate. Sama ada saya nak kurangkan hal laju ataupun saya kurangkan density dia ataupun viscosity fluid dia. Saya boleh manipulate supaya make sure aliran kita tu tak nak aliran turbulent. Normally kita tak nak aliran flow yang turbulent sebab kalau turbulent pipeline you will have then uh, additional problem lah especially macam pressure so on and so forth. Okay so the story of it why I tell you the story is because the number tu is used to predict phenomenon. That's what Reynolds number do. Reynolds number predict the flow phenomenon. Okay, in this case, in this reaction, we got dam collar number. So, this dam collar number is also a number to predict phenomenon, a phenomenon, which is the conversion. Okay, apakah maksud dia? Maksud dia macam ni. Okay, let's see now, but dia ada syarat dia juga lah. Ni hanya khas untuk specific hanya untuk if you use a CSTR, first order liquid phase. So kalau kamu guna gas phase dah tak valid, kamu guna bukan first order dah tak valid, tak guna CSTR pun tak valid. Dia kena memenuhi ketiga-tiga ni. Okay. So then kalau number ni macam ni kita nak kira, kalau kamu tengok equation is equals to uh, tau k. Tau tu apa? Tau kan tadi kita belajar kan space time kan. So volume per inlet volumetric flow rate. Means kamu dah tahu volume reaktor kamu, kamu dah tahu. Mestilah kamu tahu kan berapa besar reaktor kamu. Inlet volumetric flow rate tu, kamu boleh adjust. Okay, like kamu tahu sebab kamu yang akan set inlet volumetric flow rate. So, you kira your space time, 
you multiply with k k tu reaction with constant so uh, i said to you basically kalau reaction tu reaction yang common one okay you will know ah uh, berapa nilai reaction rate constant tu sebab untuk so nak balas yang biasa dah orang dah establish orang dah cari sebenarnya berapa nilai k so you can know the value of the k so you calculate okay tau k okay so when you calculate the value of the tau k value tu akan indicate the conversion Okay, katakanlah, okay, if your then column number kamu kira adalah 0.1 or lesser than 0.1. Kamu kira kamu dapat then column number tu, means kamu kira tau volume per volume matric flow rate, you multiply with K, katakan kamu dapat 0.1 or less than 0.1, meaning to say, even before kamu run kamu punya as reaction tu, you already know that your conversion will be less than 10%. Saya tak run pun reaction saya, saya kira je dem column number saya based on the tau k. If I get less than 0.1, I know that my conversion will be very very low, less than 0.1, uh, less than 10%. However, if I calculate my dem column number 10 or more, katakan saya kira 10 atau lebih, it tells you that very likely your reaction punya conversion is more than 90%, high conversion lah. Okay, so that is something that is very powerful just by knowing them column number. So that I will predict conversion in my reactor even before I run my reaction. Okay, so maybe you ask a question. Kalau saya tahu conversion saya rendah, apa gunanya? Okay, what do we need to know this? Okay, sama macam Reynolds number. Kenapa nombor ni very powerful? Sebab dia bagi kita indicator, kita dah boleh manipulate certain parameters untuk kita ubah nombor itu, untuk ubah penominan dia. Okay, contohnya dalam kes ni, you know that I need to get my dan column number sebesar yang mungkin. Sebab the bigger it is, the better conversion, right? Okay, so what can I do? Okay, tengok balik. Dan column number tu kan kita kira berdasarkan tau k. Okay, first of all kita tengok tau dulu. Okay. So kamu tengok dia berkadar langsung kan? Nak dan column number tinggi, tau kena tinggi, berkadar langsung. Okay. Dalam dan dalam tau tu space time tu kan ada volume per inlet volumetric flow rate. Okay. So of course re reactor volume kita tak boleh buat apa-apa kan? Reactor volume tu unless kamu nak tukar reactor lah, unless you decided you want to change to a bigger reactor. Boleh, possible, one way you want to change. Instead of using 10 liter, I go to 20 liter. Possible. One one way, inlet volumetric flow rate, kamu boleh manipulate. So inlet volumetric flow rate tu, kamu kena kurangkan. Sebab kamu kena ingat, dem, uh, tau equals to volume per inlet volumetric flow rate. Tau nak besar, inlet volumetric flow rate tu kena kecil kan? Ataupun kita slow down the volumetric flow rate. Kenapa? When you slow down volumetric flow rate, Residence time dia bertambah. Means kalau kita pelahankan flow dia, lagi lama lah uh, molekul tu duduk dalam reaktor sebab kita slowkan dia punya flow rate. One way. So you can adjust, you can manipulate volumetric flow rate. So sebelum ni let's say kamu set 200 ml per minute, maybe you can change. You use 100 ml per minute, kamu kurangkan. One way. Second way. If you see here K, so kamu tengok dan kalau number nak tinggi, K kena increase. So you remember kita belajar kan, K will increase with temperature according to Arrhenius equation. So miss apa saya boleh buat? Saya naikkan suhu tindak balas saya. So maybe before this I use 40 Celsius, I may consider using 60 Celsius. Bila guna 60 Celsius, mestilah nilai K akan meningkat. Kalau nilai K meningkat, then kalau number pun akan meningkat. Tetapi kamu kena ingat, okay, I told you before, temperature ni tak sangat straightforward sebab kalau you increase temperature, there are possibility ada tindak balas lain yang boleh berlaku kan saya kata kadang-kadang uh, dalam reaktor ni dia impossible satu reaction dia mungkin ada lebih banyak reaction lebih daripada satu reaction taking place so when you change temperature you may change the mechanism of the reaction so kalau kita tukar mechanism dapatlah produk yang lain okey macam saya kata the common one is oxidation dengan combustion kedua-duanya menggunakan oxygen gas just that oxidation occurs at lower temperature, combustion is at slightly higher temperature. So if you increase it too high, the reaction might go combustion dan bukan oxidation and of course you dapat completely different product. Okay, so although temperature is very powerful, but temperature is also a danger to reaction because it can change different types of reaction. Okay, so 
are you have learned now come back to this you have learned uh, why we need to calculate them column number and the importance of them column number because it can predict for us the conversion of the reactor even before you run the reaction itself okay then on uh first order okay now i go to the next one i change the rate law so now rate law they become minus ra equals to kca squared which is second order with respect to a and this is still a uh, liquid phase okay so still liquid phase still csdr kita just ubah rate law sahaja jadi minus ra equals to kca square so what happens to the equation okay of course naturally equation pun dah berubah sebab tadi minus ra kca sekarang minus ra kca square so tadi kalau ca equals to ca not in bracket 1 minus s now I have CA not uh, sorry, I have CA square. So jadi CA not square in bracket 1 minus X per, kita kena square kan. So when we combine all three, okay, we will get volume CSTR equals to F A not X per K CA not square in bracket 1 minus X per square. So don't forget the uh, sebab dia open book, memang kamu boleh refer kepada uh, equation. But sometimes student tertinggal yang kuasa 2 pun tak nampak sangat, tertinggal. Okay, kalau tertinggal salah lah kan. So make sure you check properly. And then this is of course to find volume lah. But depends on the question. Okay, soalan. I give you volume. I give you F A not. I give you K. I give you C A not. Maybe you have to find X. So macam itulah Miss. Satu unknown disuruh cari yang selebihnya information will be given to you. Okay. Then we have the second version as well. So first version if we know F A0. Second version if we know Epsilon0. Volumetric flow rate. So untuk test minggu depan pun macam saya always remind kamu. Make sure kamu ambil masa untuk tengok. Uh, information to do. Don't rush to do the question. Of course, nanti of course, our tendency kita nak cepat-cepat solve kan. Tapi make sure tengok dulu information tu betul-betul. Sebab contohnya katakan S1U. Kalau that information tu volumetric flow rate. Inlet volumetric flow rate. Kamu tersalah. Kami ingatkan tu adalah molar flow rate. So completely satu soalan tu dah terus salah daripada the very first part tu dah salah. The entire question tu sebenarnya dah salah. So make sure you don't do this type of mistake. Betul-betul baca, tengok unit tu betul-betul baru identify apa simbol yang betul. Okay, so uh, the second uh, formula is the version to find uh, if you are given the inlet volumetric flow rate. And lastly, the third version is to find space time. So sama je. Saya just pindah the epsilon naught, the volumetric flow rate uh, from right to left. So, bila saya pindah yang pengatas akan jadi pembawah on the left hand side. So, I get my space time. So, on my right hand side, I can tinggal x per kca naught in bracket 1 minus x square. So, you can see, right? Tiga-tiga version equation pun dah berubah completely in comparison to the previous one. Kenapa dia berubah completely? Sebab saya ubah satu je syarat dia, rate law. Dengan hanya menukar rate law pun, equation dah bertukar dengan drastically. So, that part yang kamu really, really kena ingat sebab kita ada banyak equation. Okay, now. Second order pun, uh, CSTR liquid, we have them color number juga. Tetapi, pengiraan dia dah lain sikit. Okay, what do I mean by that? Okay, again, from the space time that we are given just now, okay, the space time untuk second order, okay, yang tadi kita buat sebelum tu adalah first order, yang ni second order, uh, space time dia adalah X per K C A naught in bracket 1 minus X square. So, if you are aware, Walaupun konsep space time tu sama tetapi cara nak mengira tu dah berlainan apabila kita tukar rate law. Okay so from this uh, space time punya formula for the second order same concept saya pindahkan K and C A not. Basically saya pindahkan apa-apa yang tak ada X tu saya pindahkan from right to left. So again K and C A not. originally kat bahagian kanan bila pindah ke kiri dia akan jadi pengatas kan. So dia akan menjadi Tau CSTR K C A naught. So these three terms is what we call as them column number pula. Kalau tadi first order, then column number is tau K. Kalau second order, then column number tu adalah tau K C A naught. Okay. So sama konsep. If you calculate them column number and kamu kira-kira kamu dapat 0.1 or less than 0.1, it says that means 
even before you run the reaction, you can predict the conversion will be 10% or less than 10%. However, if you calculate a 10, then kalau nombor kamu more than 10, then 10 or above, then it means that very likely your conversion is higher than 90%, means high conversion lah. Tetapi, don't forget, the kill dan kalau nombor ni sekarang ada tiga. Ada space time, K, C, A not. Okay, so now I have more parameters that I can manipulate. Kalau tadi, saya boleh manipulate volume. Volumetric flow rate, inlet volumetric flow rate dengan K kan, K melalui temperature kan. One more thing sekarang yang saya boleh manipulate adalah C A0. So kalau second order reaction, liquid CSTR, I can also manipulate C A0. Maksudnya kalau saya nak dan column number tinggi, I have to increase the concentration of your A initially. So maybe firstly, you prepare your A punya concentration a one molar. So katakan kamu kira-kira, Bila saya guna 1 molar, then core number saya very small. So you know if the then core number is very small, conversion very likely pun small. So what I do? I increase the concentration. So one more way, I can increase concentration. Maybe from 1 molar, I use 5 molar. And you kira balik, then core number dia tengok naik tak? How much it increase? So you can, now you have another additional parameter that you may manipulate, okay, that in order for you to give a better them column number, which give you a better indication that the conversion will be higher even before you run the reaction. Okay, so done on them column number. So if you realize, then column number ni very powerful, tetapi limitation dia hanya kepada dua senario sahaja. Either I'm using uh, CSTR liquid first order or CSTR liquid second order. The rest dah tak boleh guna them column number dah. Dia dah tak boleh diguna aplikasi this uh, this prediction tu dah tak valid untuk any other cases. Okay, so that's all for them column number. Nanti dalam kamu punya lab, lab 4, experiment lab 4, ada part pengiraan them column number. Okay, so kalau kamu tak faham, okay, dalam saya punya lab briefing tu, kamu tu tu tengok eh, slide lab briefing tu sebab early really dah ajar kamu macam nak kira dah pengiraan tu. So hopefully that helps you untuk buat pengiraan. Kamu check je part tu untuk tahu pengiraan dia. Okay, right. So uh, as well as dalam Sebelum saya lupa dalam lab briefing report tu, lab briefing uh, slide tu, part yang last-last tu, I also teach you how to write uh, summary, how to write result, how to write discussion, how to write conclusion pun saya dah ada juga masukkan juga. Uh, sebab before this, I did a workshop. I think for, I think last year I did a workshop for student juga on the lab. So I included that slide as well so that it helps you also to do your lab report. Uh, but as I told you, tak payah lab report yang panjang-panjang. That's my mini project pun sama. No need to do panjang-panjang. You fulfill what is needed in the assessment form. I can promise you, you already get the marks. Okay, right. So back to here. Okay, now last one. Kita buat sekarang for uh, CSTR liquid. Uh, rate law dia minus RA equals to KCACB. So tadi kita dah buat uh, minus RA KCA. We already do minus RA KCA square. So we now we do minus RA equals to KCACB. Means reaction to first order with respect to A, first order with respect to B. So sekarang kita dah involve two reactant, A and B reactant. So kes sebelumnya, bila kita ada satu reactant, dia kata A. Okay. So what's different? The only different is nah, rate law lah. Dan juga, you can see the concentration. So, mungkin kamu sebelum ni tak familiar sangat sebab kita selalu tengok CA, right? Tapi sekarang kita dah kena tengok CB. So, kalau CB, you express as CA0 in bracket theta B minus B per AX. So, part concentration ni dalam chapter 3 kamu dah belajar. Make sure kamu tahu eh, macam nak kira CA, macam nak kira CB. Especially part CB ni because uh, kadang-kadang CB, uh, B is a reactant. Okay, kita express concentration dia. Tapi bila B adalah produk, kita express concentration dia a little bit different. So make sure you check. Macam kita nak kira keperkataan B kalau dia adalah produk ataupun bila dia adalah reactant. Okay, right. So come back to here. So same concept. I will again uh, combine 1, 2 and 3. So red law dia minus RA become KCACB. So again, I replace CA with CA0 in bracket 1 minus X. I replace CB with CA0 in bracket theta B minus B per AX. Sebab tu kamu perasan, we have 2 CA0. So it becomes CA0 square. That's why kat depan tu ada KCA0 square. So 
Ah, uh, if you don't ah, uh, if you wonder kenapa jadi C A not square sebab C A ada satu C A not, C B pun ada lagi satu C A not. So you know C A not multiply with C A not, it becomes C A not square. Sebab tu kita jadi C A not square, right? So this is the formula to find the volume when your rate law minus R A equals to K C A C B. Okay then, you know, kita ada version kedua. Version pertama, kalau kita tahu F A not, kita tahu C A not. Version kedua, if we are given epsilon naught in the inlet volumetric flow rate. So, dia jadi version yang kedua. So, it become volume CSTR equals to epsilon naught x divided by K C A naught in bracket 1 minus x in bracket again theta B minus B per A x. So, if you are wondering kenapa yang version kedua tu C A naught. Version pertama C A naught square sebab Motion pertama tu kan kita ada FA0 di atas So the top FA0 we divide with 1 CA0 at the bottom Sebab tu kita dapat epsilon0 ke atas Tapi kita hanya boleh cancel, kita hanya bagi dengan satu CA0 So lagi satu CA0 tu tinggal That's why at the bottom you have another CA0 yang tak boleh dibatalkan Atau tak boleh dibahagikan okay? Dan then we have the third version Third version because kita nak kira space time So kamu kena tengok soalan lah Nak cari space time ke nak cari volume Kalau cari space time tengok rate law mana Okay then you tengok baik-baik Mana satu equation yang boleh digunakan So for tau CSTR For this rate law equals to x per K C A naught in bracket 1 minus x In bracket theta B minus B per A x So Theta B, you learn in chapter 3, but I repeat again. What is theta B? Theta B is the ratio of initial amount of B over initial amount of A. Ataupun nisbah asal bahan B terhadap nisbah asal bahan A. Okay. Bahan ni, nisbah ni dalam bentuk apa? It depends. Kadang-kadang dalam bentuk mole fraction. Kadang-kadang dalam bentuk concentration, molar flow rate, so on and so forth. Bagaimana cara diberi nilai tu tak kisah. Yang penting kamu kena bahagi nilai asal B terhadap nilai asal A for you to get theta B. Okay, so mesti akan keluar dalam test bagi cara theta B ni. Okay, next. B per A ni. So, B per A ni you have to be very careful. You have to see the stoichiometric coefficient. So, bila tengok soalan reaction tu, tengok betul-betul. Tindak balas dia. Tahu stoichiometric coefficient dia. Uh, ganti dengan betul-betul. So, I always tell my students. Sebenarnya reaction dia kalau... Actually it's easy, kan cakap, bukan nak cakap senang. Tapi kalau dia, ma, stu, kalau you faham, if you really understand or you get the concept, reaction is very very easy if you get the concept. Tetapi I can understand, kalau tak dapat konsep tu, memang dia sangat mencabar. So, it's always the case when if the student get the concept, they can score very well. Uh, kalau tak dapat konsep tu, tapi sebenarnya you trust me, it's just about Understanding the concept, you don't have to be smart, you don't have to be super genius to do reaction, you can ask your seniors. Most of the time, it's just, dia kalau dah dapat kan, benda tu senang je semua. Dia kalau tak dapat tu yang susah sikit sebenarnya, so make sure you really check, you really understand. Reaction is very, very doable. You can really ask your seniors, it's very, very doable actually, right? Okay, come back, come back to this. Right, so I've done ready for CSTR liquid phase. So sekarang kita susahkan sikit hidup kita, kita terpaksa buat untuk gas phase. Okay, so of course some student might ask, tapi kan bukan doktor pernah kata ke gas phase ni jak kita guna PFR, kita jarang guna CSTR. It is true, indeed that we rarely use gas phase untuk CSTR, tetapi tak bermaksud tak guna. Ada je sebenarnya case where we use gas uh, phase untuk reaction in a CSTR. Although rarely, but it does happen, so we have to address that as well. Katakan kalau ada case, you use gas in a CSTR. Okay. So next question come up. So apa beza dia kalau kita guna gas? Kenapa kita kena belajar balik equation ni semua? Sebab satu je benda. Sebab concentration kita dah berubah. So nanti kamu tengok balik chapter 3 kan. Sebab test ada bagian chapter 3 kan. So chapter 3 kamu dah belajar. Kita express uh, concentration kalau uh, PFR, CSTR. Concentration gas, concentration liquid tu berbeza sama sekali. So, di dalam soalan test, kamu check betul-betul. Uh, saya suruh cari concentration gas ke? So, saya, saya suruh kamu cari concentration liquid. So, kamu kena betul-betul check. So, beza dia, if you remember, kalau concentration liquid, Ca equals to Ca0 in bracket 1 minus x. Tetapi kalau dia dah gas, 
dia sama pembawa dia dalam bracket 1 plus epsilon x itu perbezaan dia dah ada pembawa dia okey tapi kamu jangan lupa barat ada lipat kan yang pressure dengan temperature kan tapi setakat kita belajar ni we just learn uh, no pressure drop no temperature change that's why the p not per p t per t not tu tak ada but later shortly later about 10 minutes later i will teach you kalau kita include pressure change apa yang berubah apa yang berlaku okey so itu yang berbeza sekarang cb pun sama so previously cb is equal to ca0 in bracket theta b minus b per a x sekarang kalau gas tambah yang pembawa 1 plus epsilon x so epsilon pun kamu kena belajar jangan nak cari epsilon make sure you really know so uh, epsilon tu apa epsilon tu sama dengan y a not sigma sigma tu apa sigma tu ratio of stoichiometric coefficient so benda ni semua kamu kena tahu so kadang-kadang kalau nak jawab soalan kan uh, macam reaction kalau kamu betul-betul tak tahu macam nak buat let's say you don't know the how to solve it You try to find all this macam search kamu try lah cari CA0 ke cari FA0 ke uh, cari epsilon ke cari theta b ke so at least you got marks for finding this so don't leave it blank you just do certain calculation katakan kamu tak tahu macam nak kira keseluruhan tapi kamu tahu mesti kena ada theta b so kamu kira lah theta b atau kamu tahu mesti ada epsilon kamu tak tahu macam nak solve tapi you know must got epsilon so you solve epsilon tu berapa so on and so forth okay right so done So then again we have to uh, do all over again the equation. Okay so uh, kita buat balik untuk first order but now this is gas phase. Gas phase first order CSTR. Okay so you tengok beza dia sebab uh, concentration tu dah menjadi CA equals to CA0 in bracket 1 minus X per 1 plus epsilon X. Okay so when we combine Okay, uh, you can see derivation ni a little bit of mathematics sebab sekarang dia ada tiga layer kan sebab at first Fa0x per uh, minus Ra. Minus Ra dia adalah Kca. Okay, then we express Ca tu kan dah sama dengan Ca0 in bracket 1 minus X per bracket 1 plus epsilon X. So, kamu tengok kita ada tiga layer. So, whenever you do mathematics, you just remember yang third layer tu, the bottom layer goes to the top. So, 1 plus epsilon x ni naik ke atas, multiply with tadi yang f not x, yang kat bawah tinggal lah k c a not in bracket 1 minus x. So, ni adalah sama dengan volume c s t r. So, sama je konsep. Okay, version pertama, kalau kita tahu f a not, kita tahu c a not. Kita boleh guna version pertama. So, make sure kamu tahulah macam nak kira f a not, nak kira c a not, nak kira epsilon tu you can find an x untuk cari volume. Then the green one is for if let's say you know the epsilon not, the inlet volumetric flow rate, I can use the second version. So macam mana second version tu wujud sebab I just divide one FA not at the top with one CA not at the bottom. If I divide, I get the epsilon not. Okay, yang lain masih sama. Then the third version is to find space time. So sama je konsep, nak cari space time, saya pindahkan sahaja epsilon naught from our right to left, dia jadi pembawa, I get the space time on my right, on my left, on my right will be the, yang selebihnya lah, macam ni, x in bracket, 1 plus epsilon x per k1 minus x. Okay, right. Next one is, For second order. So second order reaction pun sama. Tapi kamu tengok dia jadi lebih kompleks kan. Sebab dah second order. So tadi uh, CA0. Uh, CA equals to CA0. In bracket 1 minus X per 1 plus epsilon X. Tapi sekarang kan dah menjadi KCA square. Second order with respect to A. So CA square akan jadi CA0 square. In bracket 1 minus X square. In bracket lagi 1 plus epsilon X square. So Nanti kamu, nanti kita buat tutorial, naik sand break nanti kita buat tutorial. Kamu akan tengok pengiraan ni kompleks lah sebab ada kuadratik, you have to solve the kuadratik, so on and so forth. So, another new thing that uh, that is complexity dia sebab dalam equation ni kita ada kuadratik. Sebab dia dah 1 minus x power of 2. Okay, so same concept, I got version 1, version 2, version 3. So, version 1 is if I know F A not, I know C A not. Version 2, if I know epsilon not, the inlet volumetric flow rate. The version 3 is to find space time. So, dia 
yang version-version tu sama je konsep dia tetapi equation dia berlainan sebab S1U ah uh, you tukar rate law ke you tukar gas you tukar phase ke dan that's why dia dah jadi berlainan okay and the last one for CSTR okay is when we have the rate law minus RA equals to KCACB. So you check question. Kalau sebab tu kata, the reaction is first order with respect to A, first order with respect to B, has rate law dia minus RA equals to KCACB. So kami ingatkan dalam chapter 3, kita recap balik macam kita nak tahu rate law dia. Kamu kena tengok, seorang so, tu kata tak? Elementary rate law ke non-elementary rate law? So kalau dia kata reaction obeys elementary rate law, reaction order tu kamu ikut je stoichiometric coefficient. Kamu ikut nombor dalam persamaan kimia. So contohnya katakan reaction tu uh, 1A, uh, sorry reaction tu 1A produce 1B. 1A menghasilkan 1B. Lepas tu dia kata the reaction follows stoichiometric coefficient. Ah, uh, Sorry, the reaction obeys elementary rate law. So kamu tahu, okay, satu reaktor saja kan? So minus RA equals to KCA power of 1 sebab nombor di hadapan E adalah 1. So kamu tulis ikut je nombor dia. Katakan if, uh, the equation reaction is 1A with 1B to produce 2C. So dia kata it follows elementary rate law. So minus RA equals to KCA power of 1, CB power of 1. Ikut je stoichiometric coefficient. Tetapi if dia kata, soalan tu kata reaction ni uh, non-elementary rate law ataupun dia tak kata pun tapi dia terus bagi rate law dia. Contohnya katakan reaction dia 1A produce 1B. However, the question kata the reaction is second order with respect to A. Kamu kena ikut information yang diberi, kamu dah jangan tengok persamaan kimia. Kamu hanya tengok persamaan kimia kalau dia kata elementary. Kalau dia tak kata elementary, kamu ikut information yang diberi untuk kamu tulis rate law dia. Okay, so back to here, back again. So, same concept lah. Kita dah tahu CA, kita dah tahu CB. We express in the form of, uh, for the concentration of gas phase. Okay, so just that part ni kita tambah CB lah. So, CB become C0 in bracket theta B minus P per AX over 1 plus epsilon X. So, again, we combine. Okay, so we get the first version, second version, third version. So, you can see untuk CSTR ni memang tak payah terang banyak sangat sebab you will understand it's basically I express CA in the big form, in the long form. CB also I, I have to uh, have to combine, uh, I have to express in the long longer form and then I combine yang kat bawah layer ketiga naik ke layer atas, so on and so forth. Eventually, you get the three version okay, of the equation of which the last version is to find space time. Okay, so you realize sebenarnya you already learn 3, 6, 9 times 2, 18 equation sebenarnya di mana yang paling penting untuk kamu faham bukan untuk menghafal. Yang paling penting untuk kamu faham kenapa kita ada 18 equation first, second, data, uh, the unknowns tu kamu tahu apa masuk dia. Apa tu FA0, apa tu C0, what is X, what is theta B, what is epsilon. Tu yang penting. Application equation tu is more important than memorizing the equation. So I said kalau macam test satu, uh, final exam pun macam tu is really open book. You can refer to any notes you want to Google pun boleh. Just that you cannot copy from your friend. Tu je satu benda kamu tak boleh buat, kamu tak boleh discuss dan copy from your friend. Okay, right. Next one, okay. So I done on uh, deriving the equation. Okay, so kamu dah belajar setakat ni if I remember correctly about dah 30 equation. Okay, tapi tak boleh lagi. Kenapa? Sebab all this while I told you kita hanya learn until uh, untuk case di mana there's no pressure change. Okay, maknanya kita assume semua tindak balas, kita design, kita cari equation, 30 equation tu. 30 equation ni hanya untuk tindak balas di mana there's no pressure change. However, often there are cases where akan ada pressure change or more exact a uh, pressure drop. Okay, so what happens when we have pressure drop? Okay, the good news is that Although pressure drop will have effects on our reactor design, however, 
untuk kes liquid phase, this effect can be ignored. Maknanya untuk kes uh, liquid phase punya equation, uh, design ataupun if let's say your reactant is liquid phase, perubahan tekanan tu tak takkan mempengaruhi penyiraan kita. So before this you learn about the equation kan? Equation yang part liquid phase tu kamu dah tak payah bimbang. Dia takkan dikacau. Ada pressure change, tak ada pressure change pun equation tu tetap sama. Tetapi the unfortunate part so, untuk gas this is no this is no longer applicable because remember I taught you in chapter ni chapter apa chapter 3. So yang ni kamu dah kena tahu eh. Outlet untuk gas phase kalau liquid outlet sama dengan inlet volumetric flow rate sebab tu formula kita tak berubah langsung sebab inlet outlet volumetric flow rate uh, for liquid regardless gas ke uh, regardless uh, perubahan tekanan ke dia takkan dia masih sama tapi for the case of gas phase dah tak sebab outlet volumetric flow rate sama dengan inlet volumetric flow rate in bracket 1 plus epsilon x yang kita belajar selama ni dan sekarang kalau ada you have pressure drop or pressure change means katakan ada kenaikan pressure ataupun penurunan pressure you already have to include the P0 per P. P0 per P ni ada dalam equation. So part ni lah actually yang menyebabkan all a uh, desired equation yang berkaitan dengan gas akan berubah sebab kita kena include part P0 per P. So sebelum ni kamu belajar kan yang gas phase kan kita belajar banyak equation kan PFR dengan CSR saja eh uh, batch tak apa. So before I forget kalau batch uh, liquid ke gas sama je tak ada berubah. Okay. Kalau flow liquid sama hanya gas yang berubah because now kita kena include P0 per P. Apa tu P0 per P? P0 is initial pressure. P is the outlet pressure ataupun pressure selepas tindak balas dah berlaku. P not sebelum dia berlaku. So, up, what happen to the equation? Okay, yang tadi kita dah derive kan banyak-banyak-banyak dan kita derive daripada minggu lepas kepada minggu ni. Kalau kamu tengok, beza dia adalah yang part merah ni. Kita kena tambahkan yang part merah ni dalam design equation kita. So, yang sebelum ni saya ajar, kamu dah pernah belajar derive ni. Just that, Kalau ada pressure pressure change, either pressure drop or pressure increase, you see now we will include the P0 per P in the final equation. Okay, so again make sure you check betul-betul maknanya equation akan berubah untuk PFR, CSTR, gas phase yang saya ajar sebelum ni tak ada part yang merah tu, P0 per P tu tak ada. Tapi sekarang dah ada. Okay, so bila kamu tengok soalan uh, test 1 tak payah bimbang, test 1 tak ada part ni. The test 2, final exam, kamu kena betul-betul refer tengok ya ada pressure drop ke tak ada. Kalau ada pressure drop, kamu kena refer kepada note bahagian ni. Kalau tak ada pressure drop, refer to the previous part. Okay, this is for PFR. This is for CSTR. Jadi tadi kita belajar kan, kita belajar saya kata saya ajar kamu berapa banyak equation, 9 equation tu untuk gas. So sebelum ni kalau masa saya ajar kamu, kamu perasan tak ada P0 per P kan? Tapi sekarang dah masuk part P0 per P sebab kita dah ada pressure drop. Okay, so nanti later in chapter 6, kita introduce pula when there's a change of temperature. Sebab tu uh, if you perasan reaction ni, dia you have to understand konsep pertama, then naik dah susahkan sikit konsep kedua, then bila naik ke set enam, susah sikit, kita dah tambah when there's a change of temperature. Okay, so I didn't teach you lah how to derive again, tak lah. Tapi just that remember, kalau ada pressure drop, design equation yang kita belajar sebelum ni, kita kena tambah part P0 per P in your equation. Right, so done on pressure drop. Okay, so we left the last part for today. So today you will finish your class much earlier than usual. Okay, just to give you more time to do your main project, to do your test. So we go to the very last part. So to the very last part is sekarang tambah lagi satu kesusahan. Okay, before this, we learn irreversible. Kan, ingat kita kita belajar uh, irreversible reaction. Contohnya, uh, tindak balas yang tak berbalik kan. Uh, first order reaction, second order reaction. So minus RA equals to KCA. Or second order reaction, minus RA equals to KCA square. Ataupun minus RA equals to KCACB. 
all these are irreversible reaction of which maksudnya the reaction goes forward direction. However, you need to understand they are reaction yang mana dia boleh berlaku both direction. Meaning, let's say in this example, you see I got two reactant, two product. Okay. If it's irreversible, my A and my B will always move forward, will react forward to produce C and D. However, in reversible reaction, there is additional backward reaction of which my C and D can also react to form back A and B. So it goes forward, backward, forward, backward. Okay, tetapi kamu kena ingat, untuk tidak ada reversible ni, uh, kamu imagine kamu ada reversible, during the reaction, okay, let's say you start the reaction, semasa the reaction takes place, dia akan pergi forward, backward, forward, backward. Maksudnya, kadang-kadang kalau, kadang-kadang keperkataan C dan D akan naik. Kadang-kadang keperkataan E dan B akan naik. Sebab kalau dia forward, C dan D naik lah. Lagi banyak C dan D terhasil. Tapi, masa yang sama, C dan D pun boleh berhenti nak balas masakan E dan B kan. So, masa kamu catat, katakan kamu rekod keperkataan all of these four compounds, minit pertama mungkin kamu tengok C dan D tinggi, E dan B rendah. Minit kedua, maybe A dan B naik balik, C dan D rendah. So on and so forth. So, it goes forward, backward, forward, backward. So, keperkataan dia berubah-ubah. However, eventually, it will reach what we call as equilibrium, keseimbangan. Selagi kamu tak kacau sistem tu, kamu biar je tindak balas berlaku, it will reach equilibrium. Okay, apa maksud dia equilibrium? Means, pada equilibrium, the concentration of all these compounds are the same. And dia dah tak berubah. Dia takkan naik, takkan turun, dia dah maintain equilibrium lah, maintain seimbang sudah. So, when they maintain the same concentration, kita akan cakap dia dah mencapai keseimbangan. Unless kamu kacau sistem tu. If you disturb the system, then tak adalah. But if you don't disturb the system, eventually dia akan mencapai keseimbangan. The concentration of uh, product, uh, concentration A, B, C dan D remain the same. Okay, at this equilibrium, okay. Katakan kamu cari dia punya keperkatan. Kan I told you the, the concentration is remain the same. Dia dah tak berubah. Okay. Keperkatan dia of course tak sama lah. Tak, mas, dia saya kata keperkatan dia tak berubah means dia dah stay constant. Katakan A tu 1 molar, B tu 2 molar, C tu 2 molar, D tu let's say 2 molar. 1, 2, 2, 2 ni kekal maintain. Kamu kacau macam mana pun masih you, kalau kamu tak kacau sistem dia, kamu kamu biarkan 10 minit ke berapa minit pun bila dia capai kesimbangan isti 1 2 2 2 okey at this moment when you calculate the concentration is actually correlated to what we call as equilibrium constant kc so sekarang you learn another new uh, unknown kita call kc Sebelum ni you learn K, right? K, reaction rate constant. Pemala kadar tindak balas. Today you learn KC, equilibrium constant. Okay, what is equilibrium constant adalah, equilibrium constant tu adalah bila kamu kira the concentration of your product over concentration of your reactant. That value is what we call as KC. Ataupun we can also say KC as the Ratio of reaction rate constant forward over reaction rate constant backwards. You will get your KC. Or you calculate in terms of concentration di mana pengatas dia adalah concentration product. Sebab forward kan? Forward dapat product kan? So concentration product di atas. Bawah dia concentration reactant sebab backward reaction. Then kamu kena ingat. KC is only calculated at equilibrium. Kamu tak boleh kira KC sebelum equilibrium. Selagi equilibrium tak capai, you cannot calculate KC. Kenapa? Sebab keperkataan tu akan setiap berubah-ubah. Kamu kira KC minit pertama takkan sama dengan KC minit kedua kalau dia tak capai kesimbangan. Sebab katakan dia dah reach kesimbangan at minit 10, you calculate the KC, KC minit 10, minit 11, minit 12, minit 13, sama je ni lah dia. Sebab the concentration no longer changes, no longer increase, no longer decrease. Okay, so... That's why you realize kita letak sebagai C, C, E, power of C. What is that? So C concentration, right? The subscript C, compound C. 
ada subscript E. Subscript itu tu signify the concentration of C at equilibrium. Power of C tu apa? Power of C tu adalah dia punya stoichiometric coefficient. So dia adalah KC sama dengan keperkataan C at equilibrium power stoichiometric coefficient C dalam the chemical equation multiply with concentration of D at equilibrium power D stoichiometric coefficient. So why C and D ke atas? Sebab in this reaction C and D is the product. So equilibrium constant tu mesti kira yang yang forward bahagi dengan yang backward. So yang backward tu jadi concentration of A, concentration of B at equilibrium, power stoichiometric coefficient dia A and B. So when you do this, you will get actually your KC. Yang penting kamu kena faham is evaluated at equilibrium dan juga pada bila kamu mencapai keseimbangan, conversion tu pun kita panggil sebagai equilibrium conversion. Okay, so tak apa kalau kamu confuse part equilibrium conversion, dia macam ni. Okay, alright. So, saya kena ajar kamu sikit lagi. Right, now. Sama konsep macam uh, concentration, kamu perlu bacakan CA, CB, CC, CD. Masalah dia adalah kita tak ukur CA, CB, CC, CD. We will always measure in terms of X and CA naught. So, sama je. For my concentration of A at equilibrium, Okay, I must also express in term of C A not than X. But I can no longer write as X sebab the X is very specific at equilibrium. Sebab tu dia menjadi C A E, concentration of A at equilibrium, equals to concentration, initial concentration of A, C A not, in bracket 1 minus X E. Saya kena tulis X tu, saya kena tulis sebagai X E. Sebab that is to signify The, the conversion at equilibrium. Conversion sebelum dia mencapai kesimbangan, kita panggil conversion biasa. Conversion pada kesimbangan is what we call as Xe. And if you remember I taught you, bila dia dah mencapai kesimbangan, itu adalah the highest conversion possible for that reaction. Katakan conversion equilibrium dia, equilibrium conversion dia adalah 88%, 0.88, X kamu 0.88. If you don't disturb the system, okay, macam mana kamu buat pun, itulah ke, the highest conversion that they can achieve. Because the reaction dah capai kesimbangan, keperkataan dah tak berubah, dia maintain sama. So that's the highest conversion possible. Okay, so katakan, saya nak tulis, want to express KC uh, untuk case uh, batch dan liquid flow. So kita nak express balik, kita nak cari balik kan CAE, CBE, CCE, CDE. Kamu kena ingat sama konsep. Kalau dia adalah gas flow, expression dia dah berlainan. Untuk batch dengan liquid flow, expression dia is the same ataupun basically dia tak ada pembawa. Kalau batch dengan liquid flow, dia tak ada pembawa yang 1 plus epsilon x. Kalau dia adalah gas flow, ah, tambah yang part 1 plus epsilon x yang pembawa tu. Dan tu kalau ada pressure, letak juga part yang ada pressure yang P not per P. So, that is how we express KC. And then, the next one adalah for you to avoid confusion. Okay. Yang tadi contoh yang saya discuss is when you have two reactant A and B. Tapi remember, sometimes there are certain reaction, we use one reactant. So, if we use one reactant, Produk dia, produk pertama tu dah menjadi B kan? So, bila produk tu menjadi B, kamu kena ingat, kita dah express the concentration dah lain sikit. So, bila dia adalah produk, CB at equilibrium equals to B per A, CA not XE. Okay, kalau dia adalah reactant, CBE equals to CA not in bracket, theta B minus B per A, XE. So, because one is reactant, one is product, Concentration dia express lain. Kita nak cari KC pun dah lain. Okay, tapi tak apa kalau pandai you get confused. Uh, we will discuss one question before we end for today. And then you probably will understand it better. Uh, Kenapa lah kita kena tahu benda ni. So sometimes memang reaction kalau tak tengok contoh memang it looks very complicated when right, in terms of symbol. But later when you see question it's slightly easier for you to understand. Ada arti kata lain. Apa yang kita buat dalam slide ni. If you want to find KC. Kita nak cari kalau kita tahu CA0, kita tahu XE, kita nak cari KC. Ha, itu sebenarnya in the simpler way for me to tell. Okay, so done.
on KC. Okay, so uh, this one pula is for you to find for the case when gas phase uh, flow reactor. So, kalau gas phase flow reactor, kamu nak cari KC. Okay, beza dia adalah, just I told you, sebab concentration dah express berlainan, sebab tu equation dia pun dah express berlainan. Okay, so kalau kamu perasan, mungkin if you have your senior note, kamu tengok ada setempat tu saya tambah lebih lagi semester ni. Kenapa saya tambah? Bukan saya nak bebankan kamu, tapi I rest that. Uh, macam saya cakap, eh, kalau as uh, I assume, student tu tahu, student tu boleh kaitkan balik chapter 3, kait, sebabnya ni kamu belajar chapter 3 kan, ni, ha, lepas tu, I assume that the student can correlate to chapter 4. But then I realise sebenarnya tak semudah itu, sebab, yelah, if you only learn reaction your entire life, boleh lah kan, macam saya, saya I, I only touch, I only teach reaction, I teach design project, plan design. So, of course, it's easier for me to able to correlate but for you I can understand you got a lot of courses you got a lot of formula it's impossible to correlate ataupun betul-betul tengok correlation dia sebab tu dalam notes for this semester I dah letak terus correlation dia means kamu dah tak payah assume kamu tak payah agak sedang letak terus tapi dia punya downside dia bila kamu bila kita saya letak it can be a bit confusing sebab kamu tengok ni mesti kamu terasa Banyaknya equation tetapi tak apa nanti kita buat uh, soalan You can understand it better Reaction kalau tengok formula memang susah nak faham Tapi kalau ada soalan is easier to understand Okay so later I will explain in the terms of answer You can see easier macam mana kita nak kira KC ni Kalau kita ada gas, kalau kita ada liquid Right so done next one Okay, so this is maybe uh, one simple example. Kita try one simple example nak cari KC. Okay, so katakan we have this reaction. 2A react to produce 1B and 2C. So again, if you don't know how to check the reaction is reversible or irreversible, kalau reversible kamu tengok anak panah, yang anak panah tu ada dua belah, two direction. So that signify reversible or in test or exam, I will write clearly lah the reversible reaction so that you really would not be confused ni reversible ke irreversible. Okay, katakan kita nak cari KC for this reaction, kita nak cari pemala keseimbangan, equilibrium constant. So KC equals to ada top, ada bottom. Top dia adalah concentration of your product at equilibrium power stoichiometric coefficient. Means in this case, I got two product, right? B and C. So it becomes CB at equilibrium, CC at equilibrium, then power stoichiometric dia. For B, the stoichiometric coefficient is 1. That's why CBE power of 1. So, chromatic coefficient for C is 2. So, C, C, E power of 2. Divided by concentration of your reactant at equilibrium power stoichiometric coefficient. So, it becomes C, A, E power 2 because in the chemical equation, the stoichiometric coefficient for A is 2. So, power of 2. Okay, lepas tu, kita kena express dalam bentuk concentration. Sebab satu U, Uh, kita selalu dalam kira concentration dalam bentuk CA0 dan X. Kalau equilibrium, CA0 dan XE. So, kamu kena tengok balik chapter 3. Kalau B adalah produk, if B is a produk, the concentration CBE now equals to B per A CA0 XE. Sebelum ni kamu belajar sebagai B per A CA0 X. Just that X tu jadi XE sebab sekarang pada equilibrium. So, same for C. Concentration dia express as C per A, C A not X. Just that not at equilibrium jadi X E. Then since dia kuasa 2, the concentration of C pun kena kuasa 2. Divide by C A E power of 2. Before this you learn C A equals to C A not in bracket 1 minus X. So sekarang kalau C A E power of 2. So become C A not in bracket 1 minus X. E, tutup bracket, power 2. So, beza dia, express tu sama, just that dia punya equilibrium conversion, eh, conversion tu jadi equilibrium conversion. Okay, you may ask, kenapa CA0 ni tak ada E? Sebab, 
Sinonikal initial concentration regardless sebelum kesimbangan ke selepas kesimbangan ke concentration asal yang kamu prepare tu masih concentration asal yang sama. You the concentration initial concentration will not change. Initial equilibrium ke sebelum equilibrium ke yang kamu prepare masih perkataan is still the same concentration. Okay, so next, just pembatalan sajalah. Kita ganti stoichiometric coefficient, so on and so forth. And then finally, we get the final uh, derivation. So, since this question, they didn't tell us as e, uh, equilibrium conversion tu berapa. So, we cannot solve. But let's say you're given equilibrium conversion as let's say uh, 0 0.4. So, you replace lah. Then you will get the KC value in terms of number. So, ni sangat tak ada nombor sebab kita tak tahu x e. Right, next one, a little bit more. Okay, now we learn KC. Next, we learn rate law. So, again, kamu kena faham, we have to understand. Reversible reaction, rate law dia pun sama konsep macam irreversible. Uh, whether is elementary rate law or non-elementary rate law. So, again, I repeat. For reversible reaction, similar to irreversible, you have uh, either the reaction follows elementary rate law or it doesn't follow elementary rate law. Okay, apa beza dia? Kalau if it is non-elementary rate law, maknanya the information has to be given to you. Sama je konsep dia. Katakan kamu ada reversible, soalan kata it follows non-elementary rate law. So, the question will further give you information. The reaction is first order with respect to A, blah, blah, blah. So, kamu ikut je information diberi. However, if they say the reaction follows elementary rate law, this sekarang dah ada special formula that you have to follow the punya rate law. Okay, so rate law dia untuk elementary, reversible reaction. Again, I repeat, if it's reversible, elementary rate law, rate law dia is written as minus RA, masih sama, equals to K, masih sama, reaction rate constant kan, kita ingat kan. Ha, sekarang dalam bracket tu yang dah lain sikit. Apa lain dia? Okay, sebelum ni kalau dia adalah irreversible, Kita just tengok uh, concentration of reactant kan. Alpha tu reaction order. Okay. Kita tengok kan. Uh, kita tengok uh, only concentration of your reactant. Ca alpha. Alpha ni apa? Alpha reaction order kan ikut stoichiometric coefficient. Macam case irreversible. Alpha tu kita tengok stoichiometric coefficient. So part tu masih sama kan. So kalau dia adalah irreversible, kita stop kat sini. Tapi sekarang ni adalah reversible. So that's why ditambah yang part belakang. It become minus CB power of B per KC. Okay, so don't forget, tindak balas ni adalah 1A, 1B. So the fun part is for the reactant. The back part is for your product. So this reaction, I have one reactant A, one product B. So I become CA power alpha. Alpha, you see the stoichiometric coefficient minus CB power beta. You see stoichiometric coefficient per KC. KC tu apa? KC adalah equilibrium constant yang tadi kamu belajar tu. So kamu tengok rate law dia dah completely dah berbeza kalau dia adalah reversible elementary rate law. Kalau nak elementary, kena tengok soalan, information diberi. Kalau elementary, kamu kena betul-betul ingat uh, cara derivation ini. Okay, then next case. Now, katakan, I have two reactant, two product. A and B is my reactant. C and D is my product. Okay, so it become minus RA equals to K. Okay, in bracket, concentration of my reactant. C A C B power alpha beta alpha beta follow your stoichiometric coefficient minus concentration of product C and D so C C C D power stoichiometric coefficient C and D divided by K C equilibrium constant so again break law dia pun Kamu kena betul-betul berhati-hati because the previous example B was a product. Kalau B product, 
concentration B muncul kat belakang kan. Tapi kalau uh, B in this example is now the reactant. So, uh, so the concentration of B sekarang muncul kat depan. Okay, some of you may ask, kenapa A, B, C, D tu tak ada equilibrium? Okay, sebab for this red law, kita bukan sahaja measured pada equilibrium. We are talking about red law of which we measured uh, during the reaction before the equilibrium is achieved. Okay, and actually kalau kamu kira, Minus Ra pada equilibrium, kamu akan dapat sebenarnya nilai dia adalah kosong pada equilibrium. Kenapa? Sebab if you realize, atau you at equilibrium kan, keperkataan dia tak berubah kan. When you kira at equilibrium, minus Ra itu kosong. Sebab tu, kita takkan kira minus Ra pada equilibrium. We will calculate minus Ra before the equilibrium is achieved. Sebab tu, Uh, bila kita nak pilih conversion ataupun kita nak set conversion reactor, we will not choose ataupun we will not go to the equilibrium conversion. We will always choose the conversion or we target conversion bawah equilibrium conversion. Okay, so done, right? So, uh, before we finish, okay, one example that we are done for today. So, we are done by 5, 6.15, 6.20, we are done for today. Okay, so the question says, The gas phase isomerization reaction given as following. So, 2A isomerized jadi 1B. Okay, so dia kata reversible reaction carry out in an isothermal constant pressure flow system with pure A at initial concentration of 0.07 mole per liter and flow rate of 30 liter per second. Given reaction rate constant 110, equilibrium constant 0.8. So, let me recap back what information that we know. So, first of all, this is gas phase. Walaupun dia kata flow system, tapi kamu ingat gas phase flow system. So, by right, by now, kamu kena faham gas phase flow system tu kamu dah tahu. Dia punya concentration tu, we have to express it different already. First, second, dia kata pure A. So, initially, 100% A. Maksudnya, mole fraction A is 1 initially. Why A not is 1. So, kenapa why A not 1? Sebab initial mole fraction of A is 100% A. So, why A not 1? So, dia kata initial concentration 0.07. So, C A not 0.07. Flow rate 30 liter per second. So, barat now you know lah kan. Liter per second, volume per time. This is volumetric flow rate and this is the initial volumetric flow rate epsilon not 30 liter per second given reaction rate constant 110 k 110 equilibrium constant 0.8 kc 0.8 so nanti bila test minggu depan pun macam ni kamu dapat setiap ayat tu kamu try convert dulu menjadi simbol so maksudnya ok c not 0.07 epsilon not 30 liter per second K, 110. KC, 0.8. So, you write down first the information in a systematic way. So, next dia kata, determine equilibrium conversion. This is kita cari XE. Dia nak tahu, dia nak kita tahu berapa equilibrium conversion itu ataupun berapa banyak uh, conversion of A itu pada masa dia mencapai keseimbangan. First. Second part, calculate the CSTR volume if Given reactant A conversion is 85% of the equilibrium conversion. So, dalam part kedua ni, so kita cari volume reactor. Tapi dia kata volume reactor tu, conversion dalam volume conversion dalam reactor tu adalah 85% of the equilibrium conversion. So, as I told you before, baru tadi saya beritahu kamu, kita jarang target conversion dalam reactor kita adalah equilibrium conversion. We will target, we will always... Uh, Target a conversion lower than equilibrium conversion. Logik lah sebab kalau equilibrium conversion, kamu kena ingat equilibrium conversion tu kedua-dua tu dah seimbang. Tapi kita punya target, kita masih nak product. So, in order to get the product, we will run our targeted conversion below the equilibrium conversion. And in this case, this is is 85% of your equilibrium conversion. Maksudnya, katakan, conversion kamu, equilibrium conversion kamu, dalam part A kan kita cek equilibrium conversion. So, let's say the XE is um, 80%. XE tu 0.4. 
Katakan dikata 85% of the equilibrium conversion Maksudnya the conversion dalam reaktor kita X kita adalah 85% of your 0.4 of your Xe So Xe tu 0.4 X saya adalah 85% of my Xe So katakan uh, Xe tu 0.4 So saya akan darab 85% of my 0.4 I will get my uh, reactor conversion Okay, tapi tak apa Kita tengok dulu macam mana kita nak selesaikan this problem Okay, so first of all We want to find Kc Tak apa, kamu tengok macam panjang-panjang kan Okay, we do slowly first So first part, you derive first How to find Kc So kamu tengok line yang paling bawah Kc sama dengan S1U concentration of your product Power stoichiometric coefficient divided by concentration of your reactant power coefficient at equilibrium. So it becomes CBE. The ratio is 2A and 1B, right? So CBE per CAE power of 2 because 2A produce 1B. Okay, then if you remember, kita kena express our concentration kita kan? So CAE, this is liquid gas phase flow system. So, CAE equals to CA0 in bracket 1 minus XE per 1 plus epsilon XE. Before I forget, um, saya dah terjump satu step. Kenapa kita kena cari KC ni? Sebenarnya sebab dia nak cari XE. Dia cari equilibrium conversion. So, if you realize, the only information yang cakap pasal equilibrium adalah equilibrium constant. So, kita tahu equilibrium constant is related to the equilibrium conversion sebab kita tahu Kc. If I know Kc, I can find my equilibrium conversion. Sebab tu saya guna equation yang Kc itu. Okay, so come back to this. So, from this concentration that I derive, Kita nak cari Xe kan? Kalau kita cari Xe, meaning the rest tu, the number kita dah kena ganti dengan nilai. Contohnya, CA0 given in the question 0.07. CA0 is 0.07 from the question. Okay, Xe. Xe kita nak cari. So, Xe we stay. Okay, bawah dia ada epsilon. Okay, so epsilon. Kamu kena ingat macam kita nak cari. So, let us do together sebab dalam test dalam test kita dah uh, will come up on how to find uh, epsilon. So, better we practice one time. So, epsilon is equal to YA0 sigma. Okay, if you forget, memang formula dia YA0 sigma. YA0 tu apa? YA0 tu adalah fraction A initially. So, dalam soalan dia kata pure A. So, kalau pure A, Initially, 100% A. So, Y A0 tu 1. Dalam bentuk pecahan, dia menjadi 1. Okay. Sigma. Okay, sigma ni formula dia tak ada fix sebab it depends on the chemical reaction. In this chemical reaction, B is a product, A is reactant. So, dia ada jadi positive for product, negative for reactor. Dia adalah ratio stoichiometric coefficient dia. That's why jadi Positif B per A Technically positif Tapi tak letak tambah pun kita faham dah Dia ada positif Positif B per A Minus Technically A per A Kenapa minus? Sebab reactant kena minus Minus A per A So A per A tu apa? A per A tu satu lah That's why we put it as minus 1 So B per A is 1 over 2 so, kamu tengok betul-betul nombor dia. 1 over 2 minus 1. Multiply with YA not 1. You get your epsilon to negative 0 0.5. So, it is possible to get uh, epsilon of a negative value. Okay, so you replace your epsilon kat bawah as 1 minus 0 0.5 Xe. Then, you do for CB pula. CB at equilibrium. So, CB at equilibrium equals to B per A, CA not XE per 1 plus epsilon XE. So, B per A from the equation, B per A is half or 0 0.5. Actually, it's 1 over 2. 1 over 2, 0 0.5 lah. CA not kita replace dengan 0 0.07. XE kita nak cari. Bottom epsilon tu sama je minus 0 0.5. So, what you do is you have to combine kesemuanya. Kalau kamu perasan, KC kita tahu equilibrium constant 0 0.8. The right hand side, kamu dah ganti kesemuanya dengan nilai besides XE. 
So you can solve this. You are you will be able to obtain x e. However, nanti kamu try to practice sebab ni pun tak straightforward equation sebab ada quadratic. Tetapi surprisingly last week I asked you to calculate kan the 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 long long equation. Well, all some of you did answer. Thank you so much. And actually all of you got the right answer. So I find that is very good. So means okay at least you understand the mathematical operation. You understand the equation. You can actually calculate. So for those who answer last week, thank you so much. And actually your answers, all of you answers are actually correct. Um, the difference in the significant figures, you don't have to worry. Okay, sebab nanti bila kamu jawab pun, most, not most, all of the time, saya akan tekan balik calculator saya juga. So, kalau tekan kamu dapat jawapan kamu dan jawapan kamu berbeza sikit sebab of the significant figures, you will not be punished. Saya terima je jawapan tu. Sebab saya akan, saya pun akan tekan calculator kira balik. Sebab, kan, sebab sometimes, Uh, dia kan ada banyak step kan. So maybe first step kamu guna dua angka bulat. The next step you use three significant figures so on and so forth. So the final answer if 10 people, 10 people might have different final answer due to the significant figures. Tapi beza dia tak banyak. So you don't have to worry. I will still check and calculate using your own number. So if you calculate correctly, so you will not be punished lah kalau significant figures tu berlainan, jawapan akhir tu berlainan. Okay, sebab tu saya kata jangan tidur pada kawan kamu sebab macam previous previous semester, kawan, uh, your seniors tend to copy and saya boleh tangkap dengan senang sebab tak mungkin kalau step dia 10 step, setiap step tu jawapan akhir tu sama sebab it's very rarely memang impossible kalau setiap step tu Dua orang tekan calculator, dua orang tekan calculator nombor yang sama. Especially macam, uh, that's why I said, do not discuss and copy from your friend. I can catch it very, very easily. So sebelum dia berlaku kan, saya kata saya nak tuduh, saya tak tuduh pun. Tapi just to reminder for you, kalau calculation ni, kalau tiru memang tak berbaloi lah sebab I can catch it very, very easily. So previous semester memang, what I do, I will ask you to retest back. I bagi you soalan lain, set lain yang lebih susah. So, do not uh, copy from your friend. Try to do it yourself. And at least I can really gauge. Katakan kalau macam uh, the whole class are not doing well. So, saya boleh, I will know how to adjust my start up my teaching. I can adjust for the next test and so on. Tapi kalau all of you copy, bukan all lah. Copy, dapat markah tinggi. Nanti the next question jadi lebih susah. So on and so forth. So, please don't copy because if I caught you copying, either you retest or Ataupun terus makan kosong. And I can catch copying very easily for reaction engineering. So, saya beritahu dululah. Okay. Right. So, back to this. Right. So, when you calculate this. Okay. Because it's a quadratic equation. You will actually get two answer. Kalau kamu ingat quadratic kan. Kita kira kan kita akan dapat dua nilai. X. X E. Okay. So, always you remember. You will have two X E. Of which. One is definitely more than one. One is less than one. Memang biasa. Kalau kodatik, kamu tahu matematik, you have two x, you have one more than one, one less than one. So, kamu dah pernah belajar conversion, regardless conversion or equilibrium conversion, it can never be more than one. 100% kan satu fraction dia. So, you naturally will choose the x lesser than one. So, for example, in this case, the x If you press your calculator, you will get either 0.096 or 1.9. So, technically, you terus tahu 1.9 itu tak possible sebab tak mungkin conversion 190%. So, the most possible one is below than 1. So, you choose the XE1 as 0.096. So, done on question number 1. So, question number 2, the last one for today. We want to find the volume of CSTR. Okay, so let's say volume of CSTR. Dia kata in this question, this uh, reaction follows elementary rate law. So, kalau follow elementary rate law, okay, dah senang lah. Kamu tahu, kamu kena ingat balik. Macam nak kira, okay. So, kamu tahu volume CSTR equals to FA not X per minus RA. Minus R ini yang kamu kena faham. Kalau reversible, minus R E dia dah berlainan, dah tukar. Minus R E dia become, kalau elementary, reversible, rate law. Minus R E equals to K in bracket, concentration of reactant, power stoichiometric coefficient, minus concentration of product, power stoichiometric coefficient, divided by K C. So, 
kamu selesai dulu minus RA, kamu ganti dalam equation pun boleh. Sebab ni adalah uh, linear equation. Okay, so K kita dah tahu. Kita nak cek CA. Okay, nak cek CA ni kamu kena faham balik. Okay, kita nak cek CA kan. So, CA kalau kamu tengok, sama macam uh, the previous equation yang equilibrium ni. Just that, kalau equilibrium punya concentration, we use equilibrium conversion. Kalau conversion untuk reactor, kita dah guna X. Hanya ada XE kalau cari CAE. Kalau nak cari CA, dia mesti X. So, mungkin you ask, what is the X? Kan dalam soalan kata, the conversion in the reactor is 85% of the equilibrium conversion. Maka, my reactor conversion X equals to 0.85, 85% of my equilibrium conversion. Equilibrium conversion saya 0.096. I multiply dengan 85%, 0.85. So, saya dapat reaktor saya punya conversion as 0.0816. So, kamu kena faham beza equilibrium conversion dengan reactor conversion. Equilibrium conversion hanya pada equilibrium. For to find reactor punya uh, volume ke design ke, dia mesti pada X, your reactor conversion. So, you have to check information untuk tahu berapakah reactor conversion saya. So, that I know my X, I can find my CA, I can find my CB. So, that's why tadi kita cari equilibrium conversion. Kita tak equilibrium conversion, kita baru tahu reactor kita punya conversion. So, you find back your CA, CB using your reactor conversion. So, you replace you get your minus RA, you replace in the volume CSTI yang kat bawah ni, kamu replace dengan nilai minus RA kamu, you eventually get the final volume of your reactor. So, uh, I do admit that for the case of uh, reversible reaction, dia punya rate law tu pening sikit, then nak cari volume tu pun pening sikit, dan juga uh, the, the part, the first part nak cari equilibrium conversion pun a little bit of headache. So, tak apa, you, after this you got time, please look back again this one. And if you don't have, tak apa, nanti when the semester, after semester break, we will discuss the tutorial. Okay, so, before I finish the class for today, just a reminder again, uh, this Thursday, Please attend the lab demo at 10 o'clock. Please inform your friends. Uh, the attendance is compulsory. Sebab kalau you don't attend the lab punya demo, your attendance will not be uh, recorded. So, kamu tak dah part lab ni, kamu tak uh, tak bolehlah. It's a license for you to do your lab. Unless your friend has any reason, ask them to contact me personally. Okay, so pukul 10 uh, hari Kamis. Rabu tutorial tak ada. Saya cancelkan to give you time to do your mini project. Isnin depan pun tak ada kelas to give you time to study for your test. Your test is next Wednesday, 9.30 a.m. until uh, 11. Questions will be emailed to your student email, Unique S student email, 15 minutes before the test. And once your test ends at 11, you are given 30 minutes to compile the answer. This answer in a white piece of paper. Scan, make sure the file in the combine. Make sure in the form of PDF, submit kat VLE under test 1 submission. Uh, I will open for 30 minutes. By 11.30, the question has to be already submitted in the VLE. Okay, so uh, details is on your teams already, right? Okay, so that's all for today. So I will only see you. I will not even see you for the test, but I will communicate with you for the test next week. Okay, alright.